This video is sponsored by Displate. It's Christmas time. Mid-November. So of course the world sits in for its annual viewing of one of the most iconic movies of all time and its sequel. The 1990s classic that is Home Alone. We've covered the Home Alone franchise every Christmas on this channel. First with the Home Alone movies we don't talk about, covering the atrocity that is number 3, 4 and 5 compared to the originals. Then last year we followed it up with the dog rip-off version that is Bone Alone. Yes, that is a real thing. And this is the series that just keeps giving as we now have a whole new installment. Number 6 of the official list and our 7th run through. The Archie Gates remake that is Home Sweet Home Alone. I don't have high hopes for this movie, but I do have a pretty decent idea of what makes a good Home Alone movie. Having seen how it can be done badly 4-ish times now. So let's get into Disney rehashing an unoriginal idea once again, presumably with all the magic ripped out of it. Hey, you know what's relevant to a Home Alone video? Home Alone merch! We're sponsored by Displate today. What's a Displate? Displate is a one-of-a-kind metal poster, created on a 21st century canvas that's sturdy, durable, and magnetic. Needing no tools to set up, you can customize, collect, and rearrange them at will. Not only is it supported by 1.4 million artists, but they even have a tree planting initiative, planting one tree for every sale and they've planted 14 million trees so far. They are officially partnered with all sorts of brands, but as a movie channel, I shall direct your attention to Marvel, Star Trek, and of course, Home Alone. I also got myself a collection of some of my favorite artwork from their site. So click on my link for a discount on your displays today. Thanks again to Displate for sponsoring us. Now I too can have Home Alone immortalized in my home. The good ones, anyway. Now let's get back to the bad. So we start off with a bunch of people investigating a house to buy it. Not the worst start, I can see where it's going, giving us the foreshadowing elements of traps we'll see later. I know where this goes, I see what you're doing. Open is my favorite concept. Oh god, it's gotta be 90 minutes of this, ain't it? Forgetting the dialogue for a moment, the gist of this scene is people are looking to buy, this dolt isn't good at lifting the property up, and we are following our protagonist as he's driven to the place to go pee. That's the motivation. Alright. But it does bring up our first major scene. Archie, at, at Max, confronts the dolt over a box of dolls and does his smarmy kid routine. Oh, little boy doesn't want to share his dolly. Until he's eventually taken away by his mum. I'm sorry, has he been bothering you? Uh, no, he, he, he's a delight. And I can see what they were going with here, but they really could have built this up a tad, you know? Make this guy seem like he really hates this kid a little bit more to lead into where the plot goes later. This is just... Eh. And it's like awkward, some of this execution. I like the line... What a McShane. But then as he drinks, the mum's just standing aimlessly as Archie powers up or something. And while disgruntled, Archie looks menacingly at the dolls. So driving home, Archie is upset for having to be cramped up with all their relatives, sharing one toilet and all that. But as the mum says... Exactly, and Christmas is all about spending time with family. Meanwhile, our other pair are hiding the fact that they're selling the house from the kids. Over to the other family, people are playing games, dad is grumpy, mum is on the phone, sister's in VR, kids are running around, uncle is sitting on the couch. Sick of this bullshit! Remember how in the original films we actually saw a little bit of each of the family relatives? There were these two whining about him, the snotty kid, Buzz the big old bully, Uncle Frank, and they all to some capacity antagonize Kevin. Something goes wrong and everyone else hates him. Look what you did, you little jerk! He's not isolated just because it's cramped, but because everyone's a problem. But here we've got generic gaming kids who aren't even paying attention and God forbid Uncle Stu can't work the home bot! It's just not the same. Archie hides in the garage, silently, while back in the day, Kevin full-on states, I hope I never see any jerks again. Fully leaning into what happens. Here it's just going through the motions. We have to fill in the gaps. Also in the middle of the night, the pair get a visit from their extended family. Why are there two families? Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Sorry, it's the last one. Why does he remind me of John Mulaney? <laughs> so I was does. going to the store! Anyway, the doll here now comes to discover that the doll from before is worth $200,000. And it's missing. Time to visit the family, who are in a rush. Not like a rush from the original too, with montage, music, and fun to watch chaos. Just a mild rush. Is this a good time for a selfie in front of an Uber? Hashtag ill-judged. God, stop! 
But something I do like about this little intrusion is that the Dalt does get some actual intel from this. 1112. 1112, brilliant. Well, that's a bad code. And he sees the keys, but doesn't enter now. Nerves, but to be fair, same thing happens in the original. So now we have a bell ringing scene. Why is there so much on this couple? Are they the protagonist? Anyway, this scene is stupid. Speaking mid-performance where it's clearly not masked, like, is it supposed to be like the choir scene in number two? Like a light bulb. Oh my gosh, this is so terrible. Yeah. Hey, Max is awake. In the original, we get two minutes of wandering silence. Here, we immediately get to the motif. It's a Christmas miracle. Instead of leading into it more. I made my family disappear. I made my family disappear. And you know, I think there's a bit of a Nelson Mandela effect here. As Max goes on to his 90 second montage of being a home alone kid and loving it, I wanted to check out the originals montage and guess what? There is no montage. It's not a montage. There is just a fun track that plays as he bounces and screams, but that's all there is. Then it stops. <laughs> and goes to a series of normal scenes. Buzz crate, shooting a gun, ice cream and film, sledding, all taken about four straight minutes. Compared to 90 seconds of much more generic enjoyment, not so young kidly, and with Christmas music rather than just happy music. Something about it is just inferior. Maybe part of it is because Archie is 12 and Colkin was 10 and looking even younger. This feels like a young teen approach rather than the much more fun and innocent original. The next scene we're just gonna skip. It's not fun, funny, or needed. I guess just turning the mum to wanting money now. How dare you stand where he stood? This moment's for a scene of envy, recontextualizing a happy song into a sad scene for an emotional hook. It's not a scene about happy memories because the song is called Somewhere In My Damn Memories. And it looks awful. What is this feathered vignette? Just play the scene with some nice romanticized bloom or something. This aesthetic is terrible. But now the parents go for break in attempt number two. And since you're here, come subscribe. Home Alone content every year. Here's my links. Hit the bell. Let's go. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. What's the point of giving that dolt the code if he just still fails it? Anyway, the thing that kicks this whole thing off is one verbal miscommunication. All we have to do is find that ugly little boy and then some crazy old lady will pay us $200,000 for him. <sighs> but we're still not on the actual fun bit yet because the police got called from that code. Evening. Oh, hell yeah. The actual actor of Buzz is in this movie? That's a great reference. He's duped by some basic flirting. Max doesn't come out to explain while it's safe because of course he doesn't and he moves on. It's actually because Max thinks the parents will be arrested for negligence. But again, the aesthetic looks the same as reliving memories. I hate this blurring. But Buzz gets going. I look forward to Buzz's next appearance. Oh, by the way, Max's family have twigged on now, though the realization is off screen. They're just arguing instead. We didn't take a census. And the dialogue is awful throughout. Get that Toblerone out of my face. Okay, there's one good joke here. Where's my passport? It's in your hand. It's in my hand. It's in my hand. Oof, all these comedy actors and this is the writing's best joke. Synced up now is a couple police scenes. I might like the new one better. It's Buzz again, disputing the call for help because... That is a prank call. We forgot my little brother, Kevin, twice. The idiot does it every year. And we get some world building. Kevin McAllister went on to create modern home security. We see it all over the film. That's amazing. And it opens up for Kevin to make an appearance since he clearly calls every year and he hasn't done it this year because he's he thinks it's this one. I see where this is going. This is a post credit scene in the making. Huh. Next day, Max sees the same baby in a major scene. Cool. And then at church, the two boys from each family meet. I like that. Talking about family issues. That's the coolest thing ever. I thought it would be. And for about an hour, it was. Why couldn't you show us this? Why are you telling us? And then, because the plot demands it, the old Dalt spots Max. 
So before he returns, they attempt break in number three. Somewhere in my memories. Right, now's the time. Anyway, mimicking another scene, it's more wasted comedy. The original has it kind of wholesome that she waits at the airport and says bye to the family there, or when complaining later, she bargains for tickets by saying she'd sell anything, the value of family. Here, she's just a nuisance and joking on language barriers. The mum's not even supposed to be a comedic role, really. Back to break-in number three, I actually think this could have been an iconic scene. At church, their daughter is singing. It's beautifully Christmas. And as the two are trying to scale the wall, everything falls apart. <laughs> the slow-mo, the action, the musics, the cuts. Why did you have to ruin it like that? And as the most thematic part of all, they're missing the true meaning of Christmas. They're not with the family. But it doesn't seem to click for them. Try the door, okay. I do really like this first trap though. A hidden pool is <laughs> horrifying. And they give up. What we get next is the mum again on flight with a funny, Interaction with a passenger? This is a full minute long. Oh hey, we're one hour in and finally focusing on Max. He's heard the parents' plan to invade that night and is prepping. Up to this point in the original, we've had a second series of Kevin doing what he wants. Aftershave, shelf, shopping, I guess that was the charity bit? Scary third party, ice chasing, villain fleeing, hiding in the nativity scene, or big one, showing off his engineering prowess with a whole fake family scene to full break in attempt number two. As well as audio work for the pizza guy, realizing he actually wants his family back, aftershave again, shopping again, misfortune, adulting, another fear, and firecrackers to stop a break-in. There's so much of Kevin to see, and it's all packed in so well. What has Max done? He's had 90 seconds earlier, and since then, window watched, talked to Homebot, grabbed toys, and window watched again. With Kevin, we saw his daily routine, every morning, and you see him mature. Here, Max doesn't do anything. And he's the reason we're watching this film. But now he's putting in some engineering work. Not that he's really shown it before and not that any of this has been foreshadowed, but sure. In the original, Buzz's tarantula is wandering all the time. In this, we've got foreshadowing for the wrong house. Load bearing walls and you knock one down. Whole place could collapse. It's not a Jenga tower, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> this never happens! Why is it here? But hey, at least there's a nice aesthetic now. Rotoscope transitions. As Max suddenly whips out a bunch of engineering skills. This is a 90s trope and comes out of nowhere in this context. And it's that same music from the original. I actually quite like the addition of the cringy, rich singing. And with the evening done, it's go time. This is the highlight we all come to Home Alone for. In the original, Kevin pumps himself up. This is my house. I have to defend it. This is it. Don't get scared now. The remake? Locked and loaded. It's not the right tone. Anyway, trap one is some ice on the road, though it doesn't feel like a trap Max did. Or it's not shot to highlight the ice on the road. All we get is the line. I'm trying. It's so icy. Again, show, don't tell. Let us see those results. This just looks like generic bad driving. Next up is icy driveway. I think I shattered my coccyx. Can we not have modern quippy dialogue? We've barely even started anyway. One more step. Can I go? <sighs> the running's not terrible, but half of the comedy of this franchise is the reactions of the villains. When Harry trips on ice, he gives us an... <laughs> and Marv gives us... <laughs> And that's their mildest response. It builds up as they go along. Next trap, hot sauce. Milk hot! My milk hot! <laughs> that's not terrible. It's eh. Uh... 
following that is Kokan Mentos. I mean, I guess Kevin did kind of skip on the chemistry front, apart from hot handle and explosive toilet, but even still, it's kind of generic? Like, basic engineering? Diluted crowd pleasers, and incredibly hard to believe as a trap. Then he sets ladies' feet on fire with some Hot Wheels. Again, basic tools, and instead of a burnt reaction, like... And obviously... She instead just breaks down crying. And I think this is a marker of a massive issue here. There is no villain to this story. The whole film has spent this entire time making the home invaders the protagonist with justified motivations so that you're kind of rooting for them. They just want their doll. So when they get hurt, it's not satisfying like Harry or Marv, and they're not playing up the comedy of it. They're victims here. Why is the kid coming off as the bad guy? The Dalt's then coming through the door. Now he randomly gets the code right, but willingly just sticks himself with a nail. What is this? And then Max rocks up with a pool ball gun. Not an awful weapon or an unusual attack, mimicking the iron to the face for Marv, or the brick to the face for Marv, or the brick to the face for Marv, or the brick to the face. Except in this rendition... Honey. Uh. Sure. <gasps> Oh. oh no! He's hurting me, Pam. Why is he doing this to us, Pam? This is grotesque. It's awful. I feel so sorry for the guy because it doesn't feel like he deserves this. All the makeup doesn't feel cartoony. He doesn't bounce back to health like the others. This looks like it really hurts. And that's not fun. Putting him in VR is fun. Great trick for a dumb character. I could see Marv falling for this, but he's groveling in pain on the floor weekly. Also, did they just film this wrong? Why is he crawling back to the exact same position as the last attack for the door to mash his head? Anyway, lady. This then gets more grotesque. Harry and Marv got iced, burned, shot on their groin, legs, head, face, feet, everywhere. It's an attack on all of their parts. This lady here, not the same fate. Her feet are severely burned. She limps the rest of the night. And following up on that... Ah! Spoon! Spoon? And then right on to the next basic joke, Lego. I just stepped on a Lego. The most no, painful thing in the world. This isn't just goofy fun, this is sadistic. The concentrated assault feels like it would be wildly more painful than what the duo who actually deserve it went through. I can't get across how much this approach makes me feel more sick than entertained. Oh, and by the way, the mum gets a second scene with the plane passenger. You know, the original's third scene has her breaking down at the airport before being given a lift from a polka band. Bit weird, but also a more interesting journey to see. And hits on that theme of Christmas. It's a wholesome moment about helping others, seeing family, and hey, it's a Christmas miracle that it works out. Same with the officer in number two. It's like a wholesome Christmas-themed moment, conversation. But no, snot shoulder. That's the way to go. Hey, have we missed a scene? Why is her hair down now? God, this film is so inconsistent. And the blocking goes everywhere. The parents are already defeated. They just want to talk. They're looking at the kid and still get smacked with flour. Will you just stop and talk to us? Oh, with a shredded milk carton as well? This is horrid and also stupid because they should clearly be able to see and react. I'll say it again in the original. Heads up! Huh? Oh! It at least is hidden from view and they lean into the reaction and follow it up with a climax to it in the sequel. That's two. <gasps> Come on, let's get him. Oops. Here, Max can't even decide if he's left the room, or just at the top of the stairs again leaving, or waiting there again, again. I think we should go back home. I'm not laughing at this. This is sad. You'll never find me! Is that the motif for Mouse Hunt? What's he doing? It is! A way superior slapstick Home Alone-esque movie! God, what a rip-off this is! On both these movies! Dad's referring to Home Sweet Home Alone, not Mouse Hunt. We don't curse Mouse Hunt in this household. This next trap is toy guns. That's not that bad. Wait, why are they sticking... 
Or are they needles on the end? Oh! oh. I know there was a nail gun in the second movie, but I think it's a bit too much to be acupuncturing with 30 needles. <laughs> and this is just stupid luck, poorly placed and meh on acting. Also boring. House invading can be fun if we actually get to the house. The dolt's not moved from the door. And for the one who is moving... Well, hello. This is evil. Please stop with the bloody feet. Oh my god. Burnt, spooned, legoed, needled, and now smushed. It's at this point in the film that we literally paused cringed and then had a whole discussion about how much we are not liking this movie and how it's grossing us out too much to continue to the point where my girlfriend literally left and I had to watch the rest of this film alone because we're not a fan of seeing feet being completely violated in every form of pain. We assumed this was going to just smoosh her toes even more and we're not here to watch that. That's not our thing. Turns out our imagination was way worse than reality. The feet stuff has ended now, thank god. It was a projectile attack. But even still, I felt physically sick watching this with how sadistically focused it was. The writing made us feel it was undeserved, the acting made us feel bad, and the violence was more intense, less cartoony, and more aggravated and directed. Oh, but it's not done quite yet. Dolt needs one more hit to the face, of course. Not a bad move, but taking out a tooth after all that? Oh, no! Oh, Kevin! Oh. It's less gross in the original and icicles. Yet another trap that's just so basic. And that's the sequence done. It is 15 minutes long. To be fair, it's the same in the first, but in that it felt varied, creative, and taking place all over the house. Front door, back door, basement, window, upstairs. Here, the lady goes to one side room and then back to the entrance and one upstairs room. And the attacks themselves, I've already said, they're too focused on body parts and also just really, really basic. The creativity of Max isn't there. He puts different balls in a gun and uses Legos. I am both overwhelmed by how grotesque and violent and undeserving this all was, and underwhelmed by how quickly it passed, how little they covered, and how mild the entertainment factor was. I'm just whelmed. And all of that brings us to here. There is no bad guy in this story, just conflict of interests and a miscommunication. And finally, the pair get to talk things out. You thought, kid? We just want our doll back. I didn't steal that. Well then, this is just misleading your audience. What a lazy attempt at storytelling. So what's the ending of this stupid remake of a film? Well, there's no villains. So when Max says, It's just me. The pair take him in for Christmas. And with the mum? We called her when she landed. She cried happy tears. And we don't get to see any of that? We're just told? No swelling happy reunion? All right then, as for the missing doll, turns out this kid had it. The night it goes missing was the night they arrived, and hey, they even attempted to hint this to you, stealing at the market as well as at the church, but it's so subtle and placed when you're looking elsewhere, I don't really think it's satisfying. We get one more moment of the slow-mo choir bit because they'll milk their one good thing and all is good. Oh, here's the mum. You know the conclusion I came to with every other bad sequel? None hit on the theme of the true meaning of Christmas. None go into the kid actually missing their family. And here, it's exactly the same. Max complains he's bored an hour in at the church, but he never says he misses his mum. There's no emotional sad scenes with him. I bet he hasn't even been thinking about her this whole time. He's been too busy thinking about toes. Hand him over. It's the most important beat that is the backbone of this franchise, and it's like they've never realized this again. And then we jump to next year where Christmas is spent with them. Literally like, screw the rest of the family, we don't like them anyway. On Christmas Day. To new friends. I'm sorry, who are you? Oh right, the dad. You got like three lines and... Well established, buddy! <laughs> they laugh about it, don't swell up the wholesome, don't end it on a jokey shouting line, they just... Call it a movie. And the worst part is, this was done by Disney. This was done by professionals. This isn't like the Bone Alone ripoff. 
These guys should know what they're doing, but don't even seem to understand the magic of Home Alone. They just crammed in comedians, clearly didn't let them improv, spat out a script and called it a day. Give us a year or two and I'm sure we'll hear of Sweet Home Alone Alabama or Honey I'm Home Alone, Home Alone on the Ranch, A Home Alone of Our Own or There's No Place Like Home Alone. And there's millions more problems here. The snowy news plastered into scenes with no connection, the runtime of Max versus the parents, the dialogue, dated jokes like to OJ Simpson, the blatant product placement that's insultingly bad, at least somewhat charming in the 90s. The just misleading narrative and weak twist. The trailer, oh my god, the trailer! I am trying to get home to my son. Who is alone. I'm scared. And he needs his mother. I feel like I'm in a parody with how much it kept repeating the song. Hold on. Did I like I am trying. It was like The fact that Buzz was entirely marketing bait. There was even room for a post-credit scene of Kevin calling him up. Don't need to see him, just have Buzz react, you know? Be like, huh? Oh, you know, realizing he was wrong before. But nope. Or how we don't see that extended family while in Tokyo. They're just packed in the back. It's all god awful. This was bland, it was basic, there's no charm, no message, no wholesome, and no creativity. This is shameful, through and through. But we should have known. Macaulay Culkin confirmed he does not associate with the film, already red flag number one. But also, I'll leave you off on the thoughts of the original's director. The guy who knows how to properly put this all together. Even the small stuff like ice on stairs is funnier because of the sound of... Nobody got in touch with me about it, and it's a waste of time as far as I'm concerned. What's the point? I'm a firm believer that you don't remake films that have had the longevity of Home Alone. You're not going to create lightning in a bottle again. It's just not gonna happen. So why do it? What's the point? It's been done. Do your own thing. Even if you fail miserably, at least you have come up with something original. Listen, have fun. I just feel, do something new. Life is short. Now, if you don't mind me, I'm gonna rewatch the originals again this year. Maybe some Mouse Hunt too. This film will be forgotten for Christmas. The actors aren't bad. Clearly, it comes down to the director and studio in these cases. This will just become yet another Home Alone movie we don't talk about. We've come full circle. Oh my gosh, this is so terrible. Oh, this is garbage. I don't know why they're always trying to remake the classics. Never as good as the originals. You're what the French call. Les incompetents. For now, my name's been Daz. You didn't really care. Thanks one final time to Displate for sponsoring this video. You can check out our link down in the description, and I'll see you in a bit.